Hello, good afternoon. I think it's time to, to start this presentation. So welcome to this talk about empowering Ironic with Redfish support. Uh, my name is Bruno Cornec. I'm working for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I'm based in France, in Grenoble, in a nice city near the mountains where we can do a lot of stuff. Uh, and I do a lot of stuff uh, around open source and Linux for the last 23 years. Um, and I've been interested around OpenStack for the last two and a half years, and particularly around the bare metal deployment because I've been involved with disaster recovery or stuff like that. So I'm interested by both software and hardware in combination. Um, and I live there uh, in a nice place where we receive customers to do proof of concept, workshops, and have interaction with them around new technologies. And as part of it, I've interacted with some customers interested as well by using Ironic for bare metal deployment. And that's how the idea of uh, looking at what we could do to improve Ironic with adding Redfish support came uh, into our mind. So a couple of uh, definition. I guess uh, that everybody in the room is familiar with the notion of uh, REST API and JSON as a file format. Uh, the only stuff that maybe is more in, of interest to, to the audience is the Redfish part, but it's not necessarily that slide which is then interesting for you, but more this one. Um, so. I will talk about what we as HPE do around our Redfish implementation, which is a bit larger than the standard itself. But the goal of what we want to do with Ironic is really work around the standard part of Redfish, not the extensions that we also have in our um, solution. So the goal of providing um, Redfish-based interfaces for managing servers is to give you um, an infrastructure as code possibility for managing really your servers. So using standard APIs, using standard ways such as what we have in OpenStack to interact with your hardware platform through uh, what most servers provide to you today, which is um, a BMC, uh, a way to do out of management of your platform. So it's simple to understand. Everybody working and programming inside OpenStack can program very easily the Redfish interface of the management board of the, of the server. Uh, it can be, it's based on HTTP communication, on the REST API. It's very simple. It uses JSON. Uh, everything that you know, it can be secured using HTTPS. So everything that you like and know about how you communicate between modules inside OpenStack is something that you will also do uh, with your server using the Redfish interface. So what is concretely Redfish? So, this is a standardization effort which started, pushed a lot by, by HPE originally with a, a couple of other uh, actors in the market, Dell, Emerson, Intel were at the origin of the, of the standard. And it has been pushed into a working group of the DMTF to become a management standard and the, the future management standard of all hardware platform, hopefully. Uh, it has been started a couple of years ago already it has uh, been published in 2015 in August uh, with version 1.0, and we have had uh, minor revisions to fix a certain number of uh, missing elements or incorrectly described uh, elements inside the standard up to the 1.04 version, which has uh, published this, uh, this August uh, on, on the DMTF website. Um, the DMTF is not only publishing the standard itself, it's a document describing how you interact with the platform to manage it, but also all the schemas to support how Redfish uh, represent the notion of infrastructure, and I will give you more details on that a bit later on. It also provides a mock-up, so you can have online access to a fake Redfish-based interface which allow you to parse through the different fields that are available and have an idea on how you can interact uh, with the platform. The goal is to really to be an IPMI replacement. So IPMI has a certain number of limitations and probably shows its age. Um, REST-based, uh, secured, uh, much more in line with what we do to control platforms these days. And we hope it will become the, the future management path for most platforms. Um, having HPE and Dell behind it means that already today when you buy a server, one out of two servers in the world are already Redfish compliant. 
So that's already something that you have and you can play with on most, well, a lot of platforms uh, that have been published. And, and we hope that most manufacturers will, will, will follow that. Um, so the goal is to have a representation of your hardware environment at large. So not only the server itself, but also where the server is. So if it's a blade in a chassis, if it's for us a moonshot cartridge inside a chassis, uh, if it's in a rack, you want to have information about not only the machine itself and its components, but also the links between that machine and the rest of the environment in the data center. So the chassis, the management part, uh, multi-node support, as well as mononode support. Uh, it should also, it has been designed to provide extensions, OEM extensions, such as what has been done with the SNMP in the past. So the possibility to work on the standard and provide as much as possible a lot of information part of the standard, but if some manufacturers have some additional values, some additional information, actions they can perform on the platform, give access to those to customers through the OEM extension part of the standard, and work with other manufacturers as part of the working group in the DMTF to put them in the standard if we think it makes sense to standardize that access to, to those information. And the goal is to have really a standard across manufacturer which is accessible through a set of tools but also without any tool, just using uh, the, the REST API and, and the HTTP uh, service which is answering um, on, on the platform. So the first version published in August 2015. Uh, development is ongoing, the latest version in August 16. We have seen uh, four minor versions since, since the publication of the standard. Um, again, not only the standard is published, the document, it's, it's a 100 plus page document describing uh, what we mean by, by management inside the platform, but also all the schemas to support are available uh, both under uh, JSON OData and XML format. And the mockup is also available. You can download it, you can put it in a, in a container or in a VM, and you can start playing with, locally, with an access to a simulated Redfish environment. So there are a lot of videos and white papers and facts available from the URL, which is mentioned uh, below and on the dmtf.org website. And typically, I don't know for the other manufacturer, for, for us, uh, with the ILO4 um, type of management uh, processors that we have on our systems, since the firmware version 2.30, we have Redfish available, and you can go to the management IP of your server, you add slash Redfish, slash V1, and you have access to the Redfish interface, and you can start exploring it. And we also have it on, on the Moonshot for the small cartridges. So what do you want to do with, with Redfish is typically what you were already doing in the past with IPMI, but we will go much further in the future. So of course you have information about how the server behaves, health information, temperature information, fan, fan information, inventory information on the system, serial numbers and inventory of the various hardware components inside your machine. Um, this is, I would say, the get part of the standard. Then you have the possibility to pass actions onto your server. And of course, for an ironic purpose, what is interesting is to have power control of the system, possibility to power on, power off, reboot the machine, change boot order, so possibility to boot on a specific device either the next time or by default, uh, met a certain, put a certain number of uh, thresholds on, on the system and alerts, having access to logs on the system, and some basic uh, operating system information as well. And in the latest version also, um, virtual media control. So if your platform is providing you an access to um, bootable, uh, so, so through the management board generally what people can do is boot through media which is in fact on your system or somewhere on your network and you give a remote access to that boot environment from your server using your management uh, component on, on your machine. So that is also something that you can programmatically uh, uh, configure on your server in order to give access to the possibility to, to boot on the, on the media. Uh, what we had on, on ILO and that other manufacturers has, has, have as well, but in a standard way. And finally, you have also access to the possibility to manage uh, the information of the BMC itself, so its network settings and its uh, user accounts 
uh, on, on, on the machine. So all that gives you an idea of, of the feature. There are something like 400 parameters that you can get inside the standard, 100 that you can set through the standard, and manufacturer can go way further because they have a more fine grade control on the platform. So uh, for HP, we have more items that you can control through the OEM functionality. Uh, we are providing a certain number of, uh, of tools to give you access, which could be uh, PowerShell based or Python based, which is probably more interesting for you as, as an OpenStack community. And we have also a command line interface tool, which, will, which is called HP REST, which is based on, on the Python interface, uh, that can allow you to script, for example, uh, inside shell script, the possibility to interact with the Redfish interface on your machine. What is also pretty interesting is the Redfish standard is the data model which has been created around it to represent uh, the hardware platforms that we want to model. So the entry point on your management board is always a slash redfish slash v1 URI that you, you, can, you can reach. And from that entry point, you will be able to navigate in the graph of uh, entry points that you have describing the system, describing the chassis, describing the manager, and describing the various actions that you can pass on the system, uh, as well as uh, navigating through links that are put inside the, the, the standard to allow you, for example, in a system to find again the reference to the manager and to navigate to the manager in it. So it's really a graph. It's not a, a tree of, of information. And it gives you access to all the low-level information that you would like to get, uh, especially from a, an ironic perspective. Uh, we, we want to be able to interact with the platform and get a certain number of information to generate some configuration files, for example, automatically. So let me try to demo something. And for that, all guys need glasses. Um, OK, so I was not knowing really what I will get in terms of uh, network access. So huh, let's do that. Where is my... Uh... Okay, so if you go to the uh, DMTF website, you will see that you have a certain number of mockups today that are available. One for rack-mounted, one for blade systems, and another one for the OCP platform. What I want to show to you in the, in the short video is what you can do with the blade system uh, interface, and that's the same for the other type of systems. So you have the markup, you have an access that you can also uh, create online. Um, so this one is for blade systems, which means that you have multiple servers inside a single enclosure, and you have possibility from the main point to see here through the standard that you have a certain number of systems, which is a collection, chassis, managers, linked to that. And if you go into the system entry point, you have the possibility to see the different blades. So here we have four blades which are uh, attached to that chassis. And you see that the system's entry point are using the serial number of the blade in order to create an entry, but you can do what you want as a manufacturer. Then if you go into one system, you have access to the various information, so the name of the system, the system type, if it's a physical system, a virtual system, um, partition or not partition. You have other type of, uh, of metadata as well uh, below, manufacturer, model, SKU, serial number, uh, you name it, you get it. A certain number of status. So all that is really part of the standard. There is nothing here which is HPE specific, and this is a markup from the DMTF, so it's a representation of how manufacturer implementing the standard should support uh, the platform. A lot of those fields are optionals. So here, for example, you see the processor, you see the number of processor, you see the processor family, and you see the memory available, and the nature of the processor, which is again a collection, and if you click 
uh, on one of the, of the, on, on the collection, you will be able to look at what type of processor you, an, you have on the system. And here you have at the end the links with the chassis and the manager of your system. So if we go back um, a bit upper in the, uh, in the list, we will be able to have a look. Okay, so and, and at the end you have the actions such as a, the possibility to reset the system. So if we go back to the processor, we have the collection. We see we only have one processor in this blade system. We can click on the entry point for that CPU. And then we have information on the CPU. So it's really a tree approach with some links at some levels where it can branch you to different entry points in the, in the standard. And the mockup is pretty well done because you can really navigate through, through links in it and it's pretty easy to discover uh, what, what is in it. So remember, a lot of stuff are optional. And that's my, my uh, blame with regard to, to the standard itself, is that uh, I, would, I would really like manufacturers to uh, agree on what would be mandatory in terms of fields. Typically, for example, the MAC address of the first NIC is not something which is mandatory. So uh, when I look at, at that in the HPE case, uh, I had to go in the OEM part to find the MAC address of my server which is a bit of a pity because I think manufacturer could agree on a single representation for the, at least the first MAC address of the server. But that's the way it is now, and, and you have to have people discuss around the table and agree on what needs to be really the standard and what needs to stay apart because it's really uh, specific to, to, to a particular vendor. Um, you have a representation of the storage as well. Here we have one disk uh, or one storage, which is um, uh, represented by multiple disks in it, two SATA drives in that case, and you see uh, the three terabytes uh, type of disk that you have in the system. So that's how it's, it's working. We'll now jump uh, back to, to the systems uh, to look at another one, just to be sure that uh, I don't lie. And um, again, you see the same type of information for another blade, name, system type, manufacturer, etc. All the same type of information, BIOS version, memory, uh, processors, and links to uh, the management and the chassis. So if now we go back to uh, the main entry point, we may have information on the chassis itself, which is hosting the different blades. And here you will see that uh, we have a certain number of members, so five members in our uh, collection corresponding to the four blades and uh, the enclosure itself. And if we go into uh, the blades, this time we will have different type of information. We will have thermal information, power information on the system, and links to the systems themselves through the management board uh, of, the, of the enclosure. And we have, again, links to the manager of the system the manage and the enclosure itself that we can go back through. So if you parse that data structure, you have a lot of way to uh, go on, on the different elements that you need to interact, interact with in order to get all the information you need. And here, for example, on the thermal aspect, you get the thresholds and the current temperature of, the, of your enclosure, or of your blade in that case, sorry. Temperature fans. So that was for the enclosure itself. Now we can go to uh, the management part of the systems. And again, we have six, five managers, one per blade. And if we go on each blade, we will have the information on how to, um, to see the type of manager. So this is a generic BMC. But if you were on an HP server, you would see a Nilo. If you were on a Dell server, you would see a Drac uh, type of controller. You have the firmware revision of the management board, not of the system itself. And you have access to the configuration of the network card of the management interface. And we will go into it. And you have links again to um, the manager for, for uh, the chassis itself and the manager for the server itself. So you, you can click on, on, the, on the server and go directly to the server, go back into the manager the way you want. Uh, here we have a collection with just one element, which is uh, the, the configuration of the BMC of that server. And you see the network configuration, which is the most interesting in this case, 
So the, the MAC address, uh, there are different notions of MAC address. It could be a fixed MAC address or uh, at, at install time or a MAC address that you can overwrite if, if there is a need. And then you have the IP information about, uh, about the system. Okay, so that was to give you an idea of uh, what is the standard itself. So, uh, when, we, when we had that information inside HPE, we thought in, a, in our solution centers it could be very interesting to use those metadata to enrich ironic, ironic with it, to make it easier. And ironic is one of the possibilities, but we, we can work also with other deployment tools because that's something which is generically interesting for different deployment tools. Um, so, in order to make it easy for Ironic to consume those data, the idea was to say, let's work on a low-level library uh, that will help people to have access to the data model that uh, Redfish is proposing and giving it under a format which is easy to consume from a Python perspective. And so we worked uh, with a certain number of uh, people to create um, the Python Redfish library uh, that you can find on GitHub. Um, which has been so worked on in, in 2015, and, and since that we have uh, made different evolution. It uses, it's using a certain number of uh, Python components um, to make our, our life uh, as easy as possible. And you have currently version 0.3, which is what we think is ready for proof of concept. So um, it's as a state where we can consider using it for developing a driver inside Ironic based on that because it provides a certain number of information, maybe not everything that is needed yet, but we want to extend it uh, as we see uh, the need from, uh, from the Ironic uh, driver perspective. And of course, Ironic for us is the first consumer of that library, but it's a Python library. It can be used for uh, different type of tools, and I will cover another one at the end of this, uh, of this presentation. Um, so again, it's usable for proof of concept right now. Uh, it gives you back some information around BIOS power management. We have made some demo scripts. We have a client tool that I will demonstrate to you in, in the next video. Um, and we can use, we can interact both. So we are testing it both with physical hardware. So prion servers, moonshot cartridges, and with the DMTF mockup to be sure that it's uh, working on different type of platforms. Uh, and from one version of firmware to another of a physical platform, there are already differences uh, in the way the Redfish standard is, is uh, uh, giving back information to you. So, so it's already a work we started with the version 0.95 of the, of the standard, and we've had some adaptation to do when we move to, to 1.0. Um, so I'm working on the packaging of the, of the project itself to make it available. So right now I'm more RPM, an RPM guy, so you have RPM packages. Uh, we want to work on the dev packages uh, as soon as possible. Um, and that's what is most interesting for you right now. So let's jump on to the other video to show you where we are with Python Redfish itself. So can I do that and still keep, no. I don't see my... Okay. So here I have my package version, which is uh, between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. Uh, there is an online, online help. Uh, you can interact with the different, different BMC, so with a config parameter. Then you can have information on the manager, on the chassis and on uh, the system itself, uh, which is something which is mimicking what I have shown to you during the uh, Redfish mockup. We, we are completely aligned with the data model that uh, Redfish is providing. So here, for the purpose of the, of the video, I just have one system, one blade, which is a physical one, uh, refer, referenced in my configuration. I can have access to right now uh, which URI, I will use and the login password I need to use to have access to it. This may not be as secure as you can think about, but that's the way it is right now. Um, and so we are communicating using the insecure option to not have to deal with the HTTPS authentication. And we can get info on the 
blade um, on the system itself. So the video is cutting the time it takes. It takes a bit of time to dialogue with, uh, with the BMC to get all the information and to bring them back. And what it brings back is currently that type of information. So uh, nothing fancy. We find exactly the same stuff that what you had through the mockup, except that this time this is a physical and real server, not just a mockup. But you can have access to the same type of information, except that we just give you an extract of the data structure that we have in memory to show that it's working and that we have at least a tool which can be useful to do a bit of inventory. But that's not the goal. The goal is really for us to be able to test the library which is below uh, and, and, and ensure that uh, it works correctly. And it shows a chassis uh, link to the, to the server, manager link to the server, so it's a blade server. There is one enclosure uh, around it. And as you can see, uh, there is no Ethernet interface which is part of the standard, which has been found. And we have made an, ex well, an extension. We have made a special uh, handling of that case because we were in need to get the MAC address anyway. So uh, we made an, a special extension for that to say, okay, if it's a problem on servers, then we need to look in the OEM part to find the MAC address. I don't like that. You don't like that. But that's the way it is right now. So it's a workaround. And, and I'm bugging my colleagues inside HP so that they change their mind about it, but it seems to be a difficult discussion. Uh, similarly, with regards to, to the storage, there is nothing appearing uh, as part of the standard. It's again in the OEM uh, branch, uh, which may be more acceptable from the storage because we have our own red controller, so it may be a bit difficult to, uh, to standardize. Um, Theoretically, it should, but. So again, with the same uh, command line interface, you can uh, make a, a query on the chassis, and using the same library, you will get some of the information that you have in, in the chassis. Uh, so same Redfish version, uh, manufacturer, model, chassis type, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and the information linked to, to the chassis itself, which are uh, temperatures, and, and fan type of, of information. And the last one is the possibility to interact with the manager of the blade, which will give you information on the network configuration of the blade. So the firmware version of the ILO board, so here we see it's an ILO 4 with uh, uh, the right version of firmware and you have the information of the uh, IP address, IPv6 address, etc. Okay, so I guess, I hope, uh, I will not pass too much time because I'm not the expert, the expert in the room, in fact, so if you have questions about Ironic, you, you look at all those people in the first row and, and you ask questions and, and you will get the right answers. Uh, so. To make it simple, the goal of Ironic is really to, to manage bare metal deployment inside OpenStack. It can be used as a Nova driver or standalone, and personally I like the standalone version of, of Ironic a lot uh, because it makes my life very easy. I don't need to deploy a full OpenStack environment to make the test with the driver here, uh, so that's nice. Um, and in fact, somewhere, the goal of Redfish and the goal of Ironic are pretty aligned because uh, we want to have a neutral way to interact with the hardware. So Ironic for the deployment and us for uh, description of the hardware platform and a bit of inventory of it. And they use, uh, the project uses drivers to do uh, abstraction of the hardware, uh, and uh, that's where we want to, to play. Uh, with regards to the combination of, uh, of Redfish with Ry Ironic. So, as I said, we are using the standalone Ironic to make our test right now, so we use uh, Bifrost to do that. Um, and Ironic already has drivers to interact with some BMCs. So, ILO, Drax, IPMI, and currently there are two modes for uh, the driver approach, one which is, which is PXC-based based, and, and the other one which is HN-based with IPA. Um, so there is um, a proposal of uh, 
an RFE, which is mentioned at the, at the bottom of the, of the slide, uh, which has been updated thanks to the work uh, of Julia yesterday, uh, uh, so that we, we have something uh, proposing how we plan to add the support of Redfish inside Ironic, and the idea would be, depending on how the specification works uh, for the evolution of the drivers, but to provide, at least as we see it right now, two drivers, one for PXC support, one for HN support, uh, that we could derive pretty easily, it seems, and I will not code myself, probably, so, so it's always easy when you're not coding, uh, but based on what we have in the ILO, uh, for PXC ILO, agent ILO, because uh, that's pretty near in terms of structure. Um, and we will have to provide a certain number of additional, uh, so a, a new module called Redfish, hopefully, uh, which will, again, it's proposal, which is possible to use the Python Redfish library that we have developed to already benefit from uh, the gathering of information and the data structure in Python that we are providing, so to import those data structure and do the job which needs to be done with it directly. And of course, we need to work on tests and documentation. Hopefully the markup, the availability of the markup will help us a lot uh, with the simulation of the environment and the capability to do CI, CD correctly uh, for Redfish without having to deal with physical hardware. However, uh, testing the hardware platform is always nice and I need to talk with the people to understand how the ironic community dealing with bare metal deal with those aspects around how to interact with physical platform as part of the test environment so that we can also ensure that it's working for a certain number of hardware platforms and each time uh, the people are making a firmware update, we will have to look at it again because there may be disruptions, there may be problems in, in the way they implement the standard. So the mockup is nice, but the mockup does not evolve a lot. Firmwares will evolve much more than the mockup. So we will have to deal with hardware platforms uh, at one moment in time. So again, something I need help from the, from the community. Uh, playing with uh, Ironic, Bifrost, and, and trying to put my environment up, uh, set up, I, I, we, we found a certain number of interesting uh, challenges with, uh, with this, that infrastructure, and I, we created some bug reports, and, and I, I'm still trying to understand how all that is working. So, so again, the experts are here. I'm just here to give you an idea of uh, where I think we should go as a community. Um, Especially, I found puzzling that there is not really a sysadmin type of guide. So for someone like me who has a strong Unix, Linux background, sysadmin type of guy, uh, trying to understand what it does, why there are two kernels that you need to pass as parameters in, in, in an instance, and uh, there are a certain number of questions for which I had not found easy answer immediately. So what I will probably work on is uh, I plan to work, in fact, on a, on a training for our internal people inside HP to show what Ironic is, really, and how it works, a step-by-step -step guide for an Ironic standalone, outside of, uh, uh, of the rest of OpenStack, because I think adding it as part of OpenStack masks a certain number of stuff, and I would like people really to understand how it's working step-by-step. -step. So that's probably the type of contribution I, I will be able to, to work with some of my colleagues on, uh, on, 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 for the community. And the other stuff we are working on right now is uh, this um, approach. So uh, the, the idea is to say, okay, we have a lot of information available through different type of tools. And in production, customers today um, are using very often a configuration management database or what was called in the previous presentation an ERP, um, to store those information and to ensure that the operator have access to the right information when they need to do um, measurement of impact of a problem. You want to replace that switch. What is the impact on the rest of the infrastructure, etc.? So they need that type of tool. And um, there is nothing in the OpenStack project providing CMDB as a service right now. So we said that it would be nice to have such a, uh, a tool working with the same approach as Ironic, so having drivers, having drivers on uh, the SaaS interface to talk with um, management interfaces of hardware platforms 
or um, standards such as Redfish, or different type of tools that can provide inventory information to your to your platform, and it would be just just <laughs> the fact that you write a, a driver to communicate between how the data are managed by your, by that platform and how the data are managed inside that tool that we call Alexandria in the middle, which is a librarian somewhere maintaining all the type of information in coherency. Uh, that tool could also have drivers on the left-hand side to talk to a CMDB. And we have in our solution center an open source CMDB called ITOP. And if you don't know it, I really encourage you to look at it because it's great. Um, the data model of ITOP is a parameter of the tool. So you can do everything you want with it. And you have synchronization script with it very easily. So it, allows, it would allow us, once we have the data model of the hardware platform in memory, to push those data back and forth with the CMDB and to maintain the CMDB up to date. Because the main problem we have today is when you are creating hundreds of VMs and deleting hundreds of VMs per minute or per hour, I don't know, uh, you don't want to manage that by hand. You need, you need to keep your CMDB up to date completely automatically. So, so there is really a need to, to branch uh, those type of information together. And, and then from those CMDB information, you could have on the north side other type of drivers to talk to your deployment tools or uh, whatever type of tool you want to use. Uh, here I mentioned Ironic. It could be a Docker platform. It could be what we had in Alien and HLM. Or it could be a, a network management platform because it's not restricted to just servers. Here we are talking about uh, architecture in general. And so really the idea is to have that type of brick in the middle able to communicate through different type of drivers, north and south, and, and uh, uh, in fact west as well and having on, on, on the, on, as an input the possibility to answer on an API so that you can drive it through an API as, as usual. Um, our, our use case for, for this is really to say, okay, we have a, a data center. We want to uh, put a new server in place. We rack it. We power it. We, we plug the management board on the network. Um, we have the configuration of the uh, account and, and the network. Uh, information for that. We collect um, information through the, manage, the BMC to put the data inside the CMDB with a certain number of parameters. And then we can use Redfish to, uh, once we have created the item, so the configuration item inside the CMDB, we can use Redfish to uh, put all what is the automatically uh, parsable by Redfish inside the CI, and uh, it helps us keep coherency between the physical uh, platform and what we have in the CMDB, which is uh, already a nightmare when you do that manually. And then you can say, OK, uh, that machine, I want to deploy it using Ironic and with that type of image. And again, that's something you could put in the CMDB, extract from the CMDB. You could configure Ironic automatically with those parameters and generate the deployment of the server from the CMDB, if that's how you want to, to work. Um, and you can have, so the, the way it's working, you can have uh, a regular maintenance of uh, the communication between the CMDB, between Ironic, to keep uh, up to date the information in the different sense, because the CMDB is able to uh, know who is the master of the information. So that's also something we are working on but we would need help. Um, what I can also show you is what we have done up to now. So this is not just, whoops, sorry. So this one is, uh, I don't need necessarily to talk because it's written already. So we have an environment where we want to have all the components. So we want to start our um, Alexandria layer, which is running on a, on a port, and which is answering as on, on its API. So version 0 0.1, bear with us. It's just to show that it's possible. It's not too. Uh, pretend it's working completely. 
So now we start a, a Docker container which is running our CMDB uh, platform. And we will show that it's just working with the port redirection on AT. So we will be able to interact with the uh, CMDB tool in a couple of seconds, normally. Okay, so it's running, it's still running. It's nice. So now we can go into uh, our browser. We look at the ITOP platform and we will be able to have the welcome banner. And it takes some minutes to start, that's okay. That's linked to the configuration inside the container. Nothing pretty fancy. So that's the tool we are using in our solution center to manage the 400 servers that we have, network equipment, storage system, etc. It does also ticketing and stuff like that. Uh, so we see that by default, when you are creating a new ITOP instance, it comes with a demo environment, and you have four servers available by default uh, inside the tool. So now we can pretend we have a new server using the Redfish simulator. So we start another Docker container, which uh, contains the, um, the mockup for the Redfish environment. So it's a new server running somewhere, having its interface available on port 8000. We can check that that Redfish platform is working. So we have a, a Redfish server, which is in fact a, not a physical one, just a mockup. And we can have a look inside uh, the model to look at systems. And here we know that the system is named one. So if we go into system one, we have the same information as we had before. And now we can, using the Alexandria API, we can communicate with the tool to say, I want to add that new server inside my CMDB, and I want you to uh, make a Redfish query and to import the data, some of the data that you find through Redfish inside the CMDB automatically. So we do the past, and now the API seems to be happy. Of course, it's a video. If it, if it would not work, it would. <laughs> I would not show the video. Um, but now, if you go back into the the ITOP. Uh, environment, you see that a new system has been created in the CMDB, which is coming from the Redfish query that you have. So you see uh, the serial number, which is identical to the one we had um, inside the, um, the Redfish mockup. You see the 16 gigs of RAM, that is again the mockup, and the computer, which is my computer. So you see exactly the same name between what has been uh, created inside ITOP and what, is, what you can create directly from, uh, from the Redfish uh, mockup. So um, really the goal is, um, is to provide a, an easy way to automate for operators the, uh, the, money, the management of their information through, uh, through a CMDB, as long as the CMDB is clever enough to provide a flexible data model and APIs so that you can control it from the outside. So there are a certain number of links linked to um, all what we covered here during the presentation. And that's what I had for you today. Any, any question? Not too hard question. Yeah. The, uh, you, you described OEM commands a few times. Yes. Right? And have you seen cases? Have you seen cases where uh, everybody that's doing Redfish is kind of doing some OEM commands and, and we're able to get that back into the to mainline and not OEM style? So yes, um, I, since, since the start of the work on the standard, there have been some move back and forth between the OEM area and the standard area, so not back and forth, in fact back. So, uh, a certain number of elements have been agreed upon by the different actors of the standards and put in the standard, and which were before in the OEM line. But I think it's a bit slow with regards to that. The, the real problem for me is that most of the fields in the standard are tagged as optional, and I really would have liked to see some of those mandatory, even if they are empty, 
but at least to force the manufacturer to really provide a certain set of minimum information through the standard, which is not yet the case. So I don't know how that will evolve, but I, I also welcome suggestion because I can talk with the HP representative inside the DMTF group to, um, to take input from the ironic community saying, okay, for us to work correctly, we would need that type of metadata uh, always part of the standard. So, so let, 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 let's discuss about that, give, give feedback so that I can push that to the DMTF group and see uh, whether we can make them move on, on that and improve the standard to more to support more what we need in terms of uh, information. Dimitri. Uh, so I, I do this happen. I do this happens while writing the driver. How are you planning to deal with these optional things? If something option, if something is not returned, I mean, you can probably affect HP, but as more yeah. vendors start mm -hmm. showing up, and uh, how do you plan to mitigate this problem in the driver that you are going to write? Uh, I think the only mitigation is to force my uh, BIOS drivers, my, my BIOS developers, to really put something in the MAC address of the of the NIC because. Without that, there is no way that the standard is useful. What we want is to have a single way to access to one information, which is a MAC address of the first network card, for example. And, and uh, that should work across all the manufacturers' uh, implementation. So, so the only way is that the standard, so the standard is providing that information right now, but some implementation at BIOS level do not fill that field because they think they have some stuff which are not correctly handled, etc. So there are discussions on that and what we need is to put more pressure on the hardware manufacturer, myself included, so that uh, we use the right fields in the standard and in the standard part, not in the OEM part, at least all what we need for us to work correctly. I, I mean, if, if we have some fancy uh, hardware piece in our platform that only us provide and that we provide a redfish way to access to that in the OM part, I'm perfectly fine with it. That's no problem. But if there is something which is available across the different hardware manufacturer, it needs to be part of the standard and it would need to be mandatory. I don't see today the need to disagree on the fact that you have w at least one nick per machines that you want to deploy, because if you don't have that NIC, I don't see how the machine could work, in fact. So, I mean, requesting that we have one NIC with one mandatory MAC address is not a big ask. Um, but, yeah, that's where we are. Thanks. Uh, uh, is there a standard way to discover which set of OEM extensions are supported by a given BMC, or will we have to do crazy discoverability heuristics? So, so there is, to my knowledge, there is nothing standardizing the OEM part. So <laughs> what is in the OEM part is something which is left to the hardware manufacturer to do what they want with it, because that's exactly the same as SNMP. You, you had a, an entry point, and below that entry point, you were managing your data the, really the way you wanted. So here it's the same. You can do what you want in the OEM part, but from, from an open source perspective, with my open source hat, I don't want to deal with OEM. We should never, ever have any handling of the OEM branch. We should ignore it. There is no reason to use it for us. So either we have everything we need in the standard way of accessing to the data, or we feel a bug to the hardware manufacturer saying you miss that, and we cannot work with your hardware platform because you miss that. Does that sound reasonable? Uh, yes, that would be great. Um, I, but if they can't do that, I'd much rather at least have a standard way of discovering what they do support and not have to, well, to guess. Yeah, but the, the problem is that if they would agree on how to modelize it, they would put it in the standard instead of putting it in the OEM. So it's because they disagree on the way to represent some data, some information, that they put it in the OEM because they want to handle it their own way. And for example, we have an HP One View tool which does deployment of, uh, of system, et cetera, and it uses, it uses this at OEM, these OEM branches because you have a lot of them. Uh, everywhere to, to get information, specific information for us, and, and that's fine, uh, but not for an open source program. We need to have access to the standard part and have everything we need in that standard part. So I really think as a community we need to gather the information that is really needed by Ironic, and we make a request to the standard saying, okay, for Ironic to work correctly, and I have an Ironic driver in, 
a, a Redfish driver inside Ironic, we need that type of information and we need all manufacturers to commit on providing those type of information. And that's the way, that's the way forward. And, and, and the pressure will come from customers, as usual. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay.